The other thing you can do to try to disarm people's defense mechanisms in order to get them to really say what they're thinking is suppose you yourself have some concerns mm -hmm. or some criticism of an idea that someone put out. You don't want to come out and say, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard of, and you're an idiot. So oh. the first thing is don't talk about the person, talk about the idea. But the second thing yeah. is first summarize the idea and highlight the positives. I think what you're saying is this, 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 and therefore that, is that right? Get them to acknowledge that you've understood them. Okay. I can see why you, why you think this is a good idea. It's got this advantage and that advantage and the other advantage. What I think I am also aware of, so this is yes and, yeah. is the risk that over here, this other thing that we haven't talked about. Or what you might not know is, insert facts here that the person well, might I, not be aware of. Not or there is this other consideration, you know, and so add rather than contradict, but start with the summary and an acknowledgement of the positives. When you do that, when someone feels acknowledged and heard, you gain their permission to say what you think because they, they feel like you gave them the airtime, you gave them the acknowledgement, now they wanna return the favor. That again is a sort of a normal psychological phenomenon. We're wired for fairness. And so we, we, we tend to respond well in that situation. No, I really like that approach. It reminds me a lot of actually the, the CEOs I work with who have challenging relationships with their board of directors where it can end up becoming like this. And what's interesting as to what I hear, certainly from the people who can make it more confrontation in those situations, they're like, well, everybody's an adult here. We don't need to worry about people's feelings. We're all you know, very senior executives for all these times. But the reality is, is no matter how old you are, how much experience you have, those feelings are still under the surface right. and you, you need to respect the human there in terms of doing that. And it doesn't have to be confrontational. All it really ends up being is just like you say, is, is acknowledging what that person said rather than what they often can hear is your criticism is like the whole idea when rather the reality is it's just this small area of the idea that you maybe you want to talk about in more detail. But just having, choosing, having and choosing the right words in those sorts of situations can make it so it doesn't escalate into anything that's more well, that's right. challenging in those situations. Even if it may not come across like that, that may be the underlying feeling in the room, which is the last thing that you want. The other people in the room, they, as you say, they have all of those emotions. If they really are mature, experienced executives, they may be better than average at managing those emotions, but you can help them manage them by using these kinds of approaches in yeah. communication, by making it easy for them to manage their own defensiveness or attachment to the idea and to enter into a hypothetical game-like conversation yeah. where we're going to get to the, a better result. And after all, that is what we're after when we're moving our team toward alignment is the best decision, not I win and you lose.